Good evening. Welcome everyone to our Hockamock YMCA annual meeting. This is our 2019 annual meeting and I'm Mary Claremont and I wanted to welcome everybody here tonight as the uh, board chair. It's uh, my privilege to be here um, to have our annual meeting. It's uh, a little delayed as we all know. COVID has kind of thrown a curveball to everyone including us so we thank you for joining us on yet another Zoom call. Um, but it's truly an honor to be involved as a volunteer here at the YMCA over the last 20 years. And now as the board chair, I don't think I've ever seen a more challenging time for the organization or, or for any of us. Um, so really this theme tonight you're going to hear is a, more important, I think, than ever before. And it is about an incredible organi organization where people and partnership truly matter. I mean, now more than ever. So. I'm really proud to, to be a part of the YMCA and to see how we enrich lives and enhance our communities every single day. And you know, 2019 is the year that we're celebrating today. However, um, the last six months, certainly with the 15 communities that have been impacted um, as the rest of the world has been through COVID, I think that this cause-driven organization is inspiring even more passion as you're gonna hear some of these amazing stories about our amazing partners tonight. So thank you all for joining this evening. Um, we're gonna begin with a couple of housekeeping items. So for those of you who haven't used Zoom before, um, each of the speakers and presenters are going to be unmuted at the appropriate time. So uh, just remember if you're presenting to start your video so everybody can see you. Uh, also, there will be voting at this meeting. This is our annual meeting, and that's an important requirement that we um, do have two different votes. So in the bottom of your screen, you will see the opportunity to um, to raise your or to chat if you have a question. But um, when it's appropriate for you to vote, you won't have to do anything. It'll pop up on your screen if you're um, a voting member. Uh, again, we have a lot to celebrate and uh, don't want to delay, but it certainly has been um, uh, a, a situation that, that everybody has experienced. So I just thank you for taking pause, joining this meeting tonight to celebrate some really great, um, I, I think they're heroes in our community. And um, that's one of the things I always love about this annual meeting is you're gonna hear some amazing stories um, and have some really um, great, examples of how we've strengthened our community and how we've really made a difference in the lives of children and families and seniors. So with that, um, one of the things that the Y has been able to do historically is really uh, attract some great volunteers. So I want to start by really thanking all the members of the board of directors, our board of incorporators, and our branch board managers. That the just amazing volunteers that are truly committed. So I want to thank you for your leadership and um, and really, um, you know, applaud all of you for being so giving of your time. It's just so important for our community. Um, and we certainly miss Jerry LaRusso and our opportunity to be there in person at Lake Pearl. Uh, the fellowship, the food, the beverage, it's always been amazing to be there. So maybe this uh, will happen at Lake Pearl again next year, but um, for now, we're just grateful to be together virtually, and um, I'll turn it over for an opening thought um, to our great Katie Moore, VP of Philanthropy. So, Katie. Thanks, Mary. This annual meeting is a unique one for sure. While it is great to celebrate the many things accomplished in 2019, it also gives us the opportunity to reflect on the last several months and just how different life has been. The past six months or so have been like nothing else we have seen in our life. Most when they quickly reflect on this time, it has been a time of stress, challenges, and scares. However, when we dig a little bit deeper, we can see that it has also been a time of hearing, learning, mastering multitasking, and accomplishing things we never thought we were capable of. You see, it's all about perspective. Perspective is something we talk a lot about as employees of our Y, and perhaps now more than ever is a time we all need some positive. So what follows is something that I came up with when thinking about my perspective of the first couple weeks of quarantine as compared to that of my two toddler daughters. Your school is closed now, not sure what we will do. Hey, that's great, mommy. I get to spend the day with you. But I have to work, so much to do, no break in store for me. 
Yay, that's great, mommy. Think of how much fun this is. I have a call. Please stay quiet and find something to do. Yay, that's great, mommy. I'll play while I sit next to you. I need those papers. Please just color in your book. Yay, that's great, mommy. I drew this for you. Take a look. It's been a long day of meetings. I could really use a nap. Yay, that was great, mommy. I love listening to them while on your lap. The day is almost done. Can you please not be so loud? Yay, that's great, mommy. We're singing together. Aren't you proud? This is all so hard. I need my life put back together. Yay, this is great, mommy. I wish it could stay like this forever. But my love, don't you see? Things have changed so much for me. But mommy, don't you see? This is just where you should be. Different isn't wrong and scary isn't bad. Changes can be blessings and happiness to be had. If it weren't for all these changes, how boring it would be. So you would have to spend all this time away from me. You would have missed my giggles and not seen my fun new trick. And we would have missed the snuggles that cure us when we're sick. Things have gotten scary and so different, it is true. But you will figure it out, Mommy, because you always do. You say things have been stressful, but for us, it's just been fun. We've made so many great memories with all the little things we've done. But haven't you been bored? We haven't gone anywhere. Not at all, my mommy, for the fun is not out there. The fun is in the coloring, the picnics by the tree, the fun is in the cuddles and the playing games with me. Your work is very important, this I understand, but nothing is as important as holding my tiny hand. So mommy, take a minute to see my point of view. The craziness of the world today has brought me closer to you. So today I have two challenges for all of you. First, alter your perspective as much as necessary and as often as necessary during these challenging times. There is a silver lining in everything if you choose to see it. And second, during a time of much uncertainty, we typically first seek guidance from the experts, the doctors, the principals, the leaders of all kinds. But perhaps our most valuable life lessons are taught to us by people from whom we would least Allow yourself to find wisdom in the most unexpected of places. Thank you, Katie. That was really, a, it was amazing. I know there was a little bit of audio breakup, but um, your girls are amazing and I absolutely um, love your message. So thank you very much. So now we will conduct some brief business before the beginning of our annual celebration and the impact in 2019 and early months of 2020. The brief reports you're going to hear tonight are from the volunteer leaders that again demonstrate how important the role of volunteers play in really ensuring that we have continued operational efficiency as well as convening of our community and organization. So together, we'd like to call to order the 2019 annual business meeting for the Hockamock Area YMCA. First up, we will have a financial report and this will be by um, Paul Lenahan. He's going to present our financials. So welcome Paul, who is a former board chair and longtime treasurer of our board, and also the chair of our finance committee. Thank you very much, Mary. It, it's my pleasure to present the 2019 financial statements for the Hockmark Area YMCA. The financial statements were audited by Con Litwin, Con Litwin and Sorry about that. Con Litwin and Renza, in a clean, unmodified opinion dated January 31st, 2020, was issued on the audit for 2019. It should be noted that the management letter accompanying the audit contained no findings or weaknesses. Our audited results before taking into account depreciation and investment returns showed that we ended 2019 with an operating surplus of $1,527,669 compared with $1,177,301 in 2018. At the end of 2019, the association reported total cash and investments of $9,045,616. That amount includes the Hockamock Area YMCA's endowment fund, which had a market value of $1,906,320 at year end. 
and that was up 24% oh, for 2019. No. I am, I am, thanks. Our Y has been a fiscally sound organization. And as a result, we were well positioned to deal with the financial implications of the pandemic that we continue to face. Although this is a report on the 2019 results, I would like to report that in March of 2020, the YMCA was able to obtain a $2.3 million Paycheck Protection Program loan. And with the assistance and support of friends at Bristol County Savings Bank, this loan was closed. That loan, along with the generosity of many donors, has allowed the YMCA to weather the financial challenges as a result of the ongoing pandemic. We are continuing to monitor the monthly results and year-end projections at each month's finance committee meeting. I would be happy to answer any questions on the financial results, but I would also welcome an opportunity, an emotion, I would welcome a motion to accept the 2019 financial report as presented. Is there a motion? I'll motion to accept. Thank you. Is there a second, please? Second. Ah, we, have, we have a voting system online. We have a second and we have a motion and we're in business. Uh, do you accept the financial report as presented? Yes. Submit. You can vote on the screen apparently. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I believe the motion should carry, but someone will have to tally the votes for me. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Mary. Thank you very much. Your incredible leadership, especially um, of this finance committee, you've been a great friend and so committed to our mission. You know, every single month, this um, committee of finance professionals meets and uh, never before has this role been so important. And uh, 2019 really set us up for success uh, to weather the storm in 2020. So now Thank I'd you, like Mary. to, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, so now I'd like to introduce Eric Borkian. He is the vice chair of the board of directors, and he's also the chair of the board development and governance committee. And he's going to provide a board development committee report. So Eric, over to you. Thank you, Mary. Um, I'm honored to present this year's board development report. Our why is built on a longstanding tradition of committed volunteer leadership. Our volunteers are members of and represent the local communities we serve. And at times like this, the importance of strong, engaged, and vibrant volunteers has been very clear. And that's why each year we look to identify additional community leaders to join our board of directors and board of incorporators. So I'm delighted to present our board development committee report and the names will be listed on the screen. The Board Development and Governance Committee recommends the following to the Board of Incorporators for three-year terms, ending with the 2022 annual meeting. Bob Land, Kevin Martis, Brian Murray, Marsha Shemansky, and Jennifer Thompson. The Board Development Committee also recommends the re-election of the following members of the Board of Incorporators to three-year terms also ending with the 2022 annual meeting. Joe Andrusi, Lisa Beatty, Wally Sakala, Danielle Fish, Brian Gilbert, Diana Griffin, Scott Holcomb, Dan Kennedy, Andy Kushner, Peter Morano, Christopher Martis, Kevin Poirier, Roxanne Richard, Michelle Roberts, Michael Soder, Deborah Spinelli, and Mark Tetro. Is there a motion to accept the slate for the Board of Incorporators as presented? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, I will uh, ask you to vote now. The voting's done electronically on the screen like it was uh, for the last vote. I ask that you please cast your vote now. Uh, thank you to all of the new and renewing members of our Board of Incorporators. I look forward to working with each of you. And I hope you know that your commitment to our why and the community will make a difference in the lives of those we are so proud to serve. I'd like to now ask for a motion and a second to briefly adjourn the annual meeting. So moved. So moved. OK. 
Okay. All any opposed? Okay, please vote on the screen. I would now like to call to order our annual meeting of the Board of Incorporators. One of the key responsibilities of the Board of Incorporators is the election of our Board of Directors each year. The Board Development Committee also recommends to the Board of Incorporators the election of the following for a three-year term on the Board of Directors with the 2022 annual meeting. Ken Rosa. The Board Development Committee proposes to the Board of Incorporators the re-election of the following the Board of Directors for a three-year term ending with the 2022 annual meeting. Steve Clapp, Brian Early, Lisa Galliota, Darlene Gannett, Rick LaCroix, Jerry LaRusso, John Lee, Jeff Mann, and Faith Weiner. May I have a motion and a second from the members of the Board of Incorporators to elect and re-elect the proposed members to the Board of Directors. And once again, I ask for a vote electronically on your screens if we get a motion in a second. All right, please vote. Okay. On behalf of the Hockamock Area YMCA, I would like to welcome our new and continuing members of the Board of Directors. I appreciate your commitment to our mission and look forward to working with each of you on the Board of Directors. May I now have a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting of the Board of Incorporators. So moved. Second. All right. Um, all those in favor, please vote yes. And if anyone is opposed, please vote no. And I will now invite Mary Claremont back to continue the meeting and celebration. Great. Thank you so much, Eric. Well done. Um, I'd now like to reconvene our 2019 annual meeting. Um, before I move on, I'd like to really add my many thanks uh, on top of Eric's to our Board of Incorporators whose terms have ended and are moving on. Really appreciate your commitment. Um, you've helped to shape the YMCA to really meet the needs and urgent um, community needs and um, look forward to your continued engagement uh, with our YMCA. I'd also like to recognize um, one of our departing board members, um, Jennifer Rowe, served with distinction on our board of directors and she's been uh, a dedicated participant and she's decided to step down from the board. But Jen is a passionate advocate for our YMCA and I'm really grateful, Jen, to have had the opportunity to work with you. Um, she's really had amazing uh, questions and debate and really brought a lot and connected us to meaningful solutions for the community. So Jen, I, I thank you for your partnership throughout the past few years. I'd also like to add my congratulations to the new members of the Board of Incorporators who've joined the team this evening and uh, I look forward to partnering with you at the Board of Incorporator meetings and also uh, our newest board member Ken Rosa Welcome, uh, look forward to meeting you in person and uh, looking forward to volunteering with you. So thank you. Also, um, I was, uh, I think that 2019, as I mentioned, was a great year. And this year's annual report has been emailed to everyone. So you'll see uh, a lot of the highlights from tonight's meeting are uh, accentuated in that annual report. That virtual set, um, uh, document is really a great piece that you can share with your friends, share with your family members, share with your colleagues, really keep people connected to what's going on in our community. I encourage you to, to um, help support the, the distribution of it to your friends and family because it really tells the story of human impact and, um, and it just really, uh, you know, you'd be surprised how many people don't really know what the why does for our community and I think this uh, annual report is a great way of sharing that story. So every single day we're making uh, impact and uh, I, I want to help celebrate those 2019 award recipients as well. So with that our first uh, award goes out as the Dean College Scholarship Award. This is the 17th consecutive year, 17, that's a lot of years, that our friends at Dean College have presented full tuition scholarship that's 100% tuition to a young person who's been part of this Y family. D 
Dean has been a great friend to our Y and their president, Dr. Paula Rooney, is a member of our board of incorporators and she's with us this evening. I want to acknowledge her to celebrate Maddie, who's been named as the Dean College Scholarship that happened last spring. Congratulations to Madison Frechette. She is embarking on her college journey this fall at Dean College. Maddie's been a member of the Y for 15 years. She attended preschool at the Y. She worked at Y camp as a counselor and she's also been a dance instructor. She is a double major in dance and business. And again, um, congratulations to Maddie and thank you to President Rooney. Everyone at Dean College has just been a, an amazing partner with the YMCA. And we're so proud to have that partnership and uh, so proud that and grateful that we're able to give this incredible opportunity to one young person in our community and continue their education at this great institution. So I would like to invite Maddie to say a few words to us tonight. So Maddie, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Hi everyone. I just wanted to give a big thank you to Dr. Rooney and the entire team at the Hockamock Area YMCA for providing me with the opportunity to obtain this scholarship and privilege. It means the world to me. I'm very proud to be an employee of the YMCA and to be a brand new Dean College Bulldog. Once again, thank you all for helping me achieve a wonderful education and scholarship, and I will forever be grateful to the YMCA, Dr. Rooney, and Dean College for this opportunity. Thank you all again. Thank you, Maddie. You're an outstanding young lady, and I wanna thank you and Paula for such steadfast partnership. Um, it's been amazing. And um, it's, it's just so much fun to, to be able to recognize somebody who's been outstanding like you, Maddie. So thank you. And Paula, you make it possible. So thank you as well. I'd now like to present our 2019 Branch Red Triangle Awards. These are presented to individuals and organizations recognizing their partnership and support of the programs and activities of the YMCA and meeting the challenging needs of our local communities. Each recipient will be receiving an actual award after tonight's meeting, along with a frame page from the annual report. As always, these are amazing stories, just highlighting the award recipients and the in this year's annual report doesn't do it justice. You get to hear in person tonight about these really special people. And um, so our first award is the Invensis Foxborough branch. I'm going to turn it over to Jim Downs, who will be presenting. He is our chief operating officer and, and he's um, here to give the Invensis Foxborough Award for the Red Triangle. Jim. Thank you, Mary. It's an incredible privilege to be able to honor Westside Benevolent Circle tonight for their outstanding work in the community, serving so many families in the areas of food security, clothing, and many essential items. This summer, as an example, Westside saw a need and responded by serving 5,500 meals and giving out $30,000 in gift cards to help fill the gap that was created by the pandemic. They don't stop at the essentials, they take it a step further and bring joy and laughter to those families that have needs through programs like Gift of Hope, where they provide bikes for kids. And of course, the massive undertaking of the holiday giving program where they provide gifts for over 350 Mansfield ch children during the holidays. It's an honor to partner with an organization like Westside and Don Saba and many of our volunteers as our mission, as our missions of helping our communities align perfectly. We support each other in our work in many ways, but one of them is that Westside Benevolent Circle identifies children who need a camp experience and the Y and Westside work together to give that, that camper, those campers a membership and a camp scholarship. MLK Jr. once made the statement, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Westside Benevolent Circle volunteers can stand proud and answer that question because of the great work they accomplish every year, helping so many individuals and families that need them. This is what makes them a great candidate for the Invensis Foxborough Red Triangle Award. I'd like to introduce Don Saba representing the Westside Benevolent Circle. Don. Thank you, Jim, very much for recognizing uh, Westside Benevolent Circle. I'm very proud to accept this award on behalf of all of our volunteers and our board as well. We're very happy to be able to remain close to our charter of 130 years ago of neighbor helping neighbor. 
We couldn't do what we do without the help of our local businesses, our churches, our schools, dentist office, doctor's offices in our community, as well as the residents. They give to us, which enables us to continue to support the community in conjunction with the Y. When we see a need, we all come together to meet that need of the families and the children. So we thank you so much for working with us and we thank everybody who continues to support us. Congratulations, Don. Thank you for the great work of the West Side Benevolent Circle, uh, everything that they do for the community. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, now to present the Burnin Family Branch Red Triangle Award is Mary Kate Bergen, Director of Health Innovation. Mary Kate has done inspiring work during this pandemic and this year providing meals to so many kids and family and being so adaptable to the needs that have just grown exponentially. So thank you for your staff leadership and the recent recognition you received as a recipient of the George Johnson Award. So I'll turn it over to Mary Kate. Thank you, Mary. That's very kind. Good evening, everyone. It's my great honor tonight to present the Burnin Family Branch Red Triangle Award to the Milford Public Schools. We have been fortunate to work with the team in Milford over a number of years on initiatives including Healthy Futures, the Milford Summer Meals Program, which during this most recent pandemic, we served over 100,000 meals. To put that in perspective, it would have taken us seven years of our normal summer program to reach that number. And we did it together. We also work closely on our STEM programming and most recently starting a brand new remote learning site at the Milford Youth Center. From Dr. Kevin McIntyre and his leadership team to Carla Tuttle and the phenomenal food services ladies that make this work possible to the retired and current teachers who volunteer at our meal program, working with their current and former students. We cannot ask for better partners in this work. And on personal note, Kevin, from day one, you've said yes at every turn and you've really welcomed us in as a community partner. And we're so grateful to be able to work together. And we can't think of a better recipient, especially in 2020 for the Burn Family Branch Red Triangle Award. So with that, again, my honor, and I'm thrilled to present this to Dr. Kevin McIntyre, Superintendent of the Milford Public Schools. So, so thank you very much. First of all, I wanna say Mary-Kate is completely awesome. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm honored and humbled to accept this award on behalf of the Milford Public Schools. It's, it's important for me to first say that the YMCA is more than a partner for Milford. They're an essential part of how we operate and what we do. For the past five years, the YMCA has led and supported a summer meals program in Milford, which has been incredibly successful at closing some of our food insecurity gaps for children in our community. This partnership and program became even more important as we, like districts across the Commonwealth, were required to close our doors due to the pandemic in March. Yet unlike many districts in our state, and because of our critical connection to the Y, we were immediately able to provide both breakfast and lunch to our students. This evolved into providing meals on the weekends and bags of groceries that included fresh produce and healthy options for our families. From, from the time we moved to fully remote learning to when we recently opened our doors on September 10th, and I know Mary Kate mentioned this, but I think it bears repeating, we served more than 120,000 meals to our families in Milford. And we could not have accomplished any of this without the support from the YMCA. And I wanna share one more story. Uh, many school districts in Massachusetts are opening in a hybrid model. Uh, and we, we opened our doors on September 10th, last, last Thursday, and, and we're off to a great start. Um, any given day, approximately 50% of our students are in our buildings in front of teachers for in-person sessions. The other 50 to 60% of students are home learning on virtual platforms or completing independent work. And this model presents many challenges for our working families. I, I reached out to Ed Hurley, and, and sometimes he rolls his eyes, I think, when I text or call him. But uh, I shared our dilemma. And in less than a month, Kim Jennings and her team were able to create and implement a program in partnership with our youth center in town. And it's off to an incredible start. This clearly shows how flexible, creative, and supportive the YMCA truly is, and the immense value our relationship with the YMCA is for Milford, the Milford community. I, I wanna, in all seriousness, thank Ed Hurley. He's, he's unbelievable. Kim Jennings, Mary Kate Bergen, and the entire YMCA team for their tireless work for Milford and willingness to meet every challenge. Um, 
I really wish that I could present the YMCA an award in recognition on behalf of the Milford community instead of humbly accepting this award this evening on, on their behalf. Thank you for your partnership, your support, and your friendship. I appreciate it, and the Milford community sincerely thanks you. Thank you. Well, congratulations, Kevin. This has been um, a well-deserved award, so you, I'm glad you humbly accept it because you're very well-deserving, and um, you've been a great supporter and partner of the YMCA for many, many years. So uh, we're proud to have you on our Board of Incorporators, and I'm really thrilled that we have had an opportunity to recognize Milford Public Schools this evening. So to present our North Attleboro um, Red Triangle Award, I'm going to introduce Ed Hurley. Um, so I'll turn it over to Ed. Thank you very much, Mary. Um, it, it was 27 years ago that I joined the staff of the Hockamock Area YMCA. My family relocated to North Attleboro, and not surprisingly, among the first people we met in town were Kevin and Betty Poirier, and we've been friends ever since. But then again, everyone in the town of North Attleboro considers Betty a friend. She's one of the most genuine, thoughtful, and caring people I have ever known. Her compassion and her empathy, when you couple that with her commitment to public service, it leaves a deep impression on everyone who gets to know Betty. And when you know Betty, you know she doesn't talk, she does. It's impossible to calculate the number of people whose quality of life Betty has impacted and improved. I've often said there has to be more than one representative Poirier because there's no way that one person could be in so many places at once. The town of North Attleboro has been represented by Betty and her husband Kevin in the state legislature for 44 years. And while Betty is retiring from public service, we all know that she will remain a force for good in the town of North Attleboro that she loves so much. You and your family have been longtime members and champions of the mission of our YMCA. And as much as your hometown, as much as you love your hometown, that love pales in comparison to how much your neighbors and friends, including our Y, love you, Betty. Your legacy will continue for years and for generations. Maya Angelou once said, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So thank you, Betty, for making all of us feel so special and for impacting so many throughout the district that you proudly represented, in the Commonwealth you were dedicated to, and most of all, in your beloved North Attleboro. So on behalf of all your friends, and fans at the Hockamock Area YMCA. It is a deep honor for me to present to you the North Attleboro Red Triangle Award in recognition of your tireless commitment to improving the quality of life for so many in North Attleboro. Thanks, Betty. Hello, Ed. Is it my turn to talk? <laughs> um, I am almost speechless uh, and so humbled by your kind words. Thank you so much, Ed. Uh, you know, for me, it has been a privilege to be in the position that I'm in so that I am aware of all the uh, problems and troubles that people have in not only the town of North Attleboro, but in the entire area. And the Y has always been a great resource where uh, kids who need preschool and parents can't afford it and can't work without it, you've been there for them. You've been there for summer camp for a lot of children who wouldn't have had that wonderful experience otherwise. For all the seniors that go to the Y, and stay healthy and well over the course of time. How fortunate are we to have the Y there for them? And all the many other wonderful things that you do. Um, for me, it has been a, really a labor of love to be in a position where you can help people 
find ways to make their life easier, better, maybe not as many problems. It has been honestly my joy to be able to do that. And no one does it alone. So the YMCA and many others too numerous for me to mention uh, have been there when I called on them. And uh, I'm not bashful. So I know I've reached out many times to say, please help with this situation or that situation. And you, along with many others, have always been there to answer that call. So thank you for this honor. It truly uh, makes me very proud to be associated with the Hockamock YMCA and all the many wonderful things that you do all the time. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Betty. A very special friend of the Y and um, very heartfelt words. So thank you so much for all that you've done and the impact that you've had on the Y and especially just continuing the mission and supporting not just the town of North Attleboro, but far beyond that. So thank you so much, Betty. Your Poirier family legacy is going to live on and you're a proud part of this organization. So every year at the annual meeting, I'm always impressed to, uh, to, to hear the things that you've accomplished and uh, I couldn't have be more in agreement with Ed and this award for you. So happy retirement. <laughs> yeah. um, so the next award is our um, Youth of the Year Awards. Every year, this is a, a great opportunity for us to recognize the young people that have really made a difference in the lives of um, their peers, in the lives of people at the Y, and on lives of people in the community. So we're gonna recognize three amazing teens that have truly impacted um, their community and the Y itself. And um, they're not just um, they're not just your average kids. They're they're people that really have um, gone beyond themselves and been very selfless to uh, make a difference. So uh, our first award um, announcement is going to be by uh, Robbie Lawrence. He's from our North Attleboro branch. Robbie's assistant camp, uh, camp director and he's going to um, give congratulations to Sandy and her family. You just hold on one second. Yeah. I apologize. That's all right. Well, they probably uh, used them. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and, <laughs> that's all right. Why don't we? Why don't we? Uh, we can come back to North Attleboro when they're ready. Um, we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and move to uh, the Burnin Family Branch. Um, the Youth of the Year is. Christina Edens, and she's the branch aquatics director. Congratulations to Jake on receiving the Burning Family Youth of the Year Award. So we'll turn it over to Christina Edens. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I am Christina Edens. I'm the branch aquatic director, and currently I am overseeing the out of school time program in Milford as well. And I have the pleasure and privilege of introducing our Youth of the Year Award to a young individual who gives his heart and passion to all things he does with the Y. Jake started off as a volunteer within the aquatics department for two years. And when he turned 16, he was eagerly filling out his application and becoming certified as a lifeguard and a swim instructor within the aquatic department and started to work right away. This past summer, he worked with our summer camp and created lifelong memories and connections with all campers and staff. And just recently, Jake has agreed to start to take the next step in his leadership development within the department. Jake has many leadership qualities that align with the Y mission, and I'm proud and honored to present this award tonight. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Christina. Congratulations, Jake. We're um, going to go back to North Attleboro, and Robbie Lawrence is going to introduce and congratulate Sandy. Thanks, Christina. 
Mary, um, I think Jake might be um, might be ready to speak. Jake oh, I apologize. I, I cut Jake off. Let's let's go with Jake first. Hi. So my first, apologies, I, Jake. You have the no mic. No worries. <laughs> Hi, so first I definitely want to thank North Attleboro Youth of the Year Award to Sandy Whitaker. <laughs> so first Robbie, Robbie, can we let Jake speak first? It was my my fault. All good, no worries. So first I want to thank Christina and Sarah for being wonderful directors and really guiding me towards success. I've always loved working at the Y and seeing a smile on all the kids' faces. Um, helping kids progress in their swim skills, but also just making a difference in their lives and bringing a smile to their face. Um, my time in youth programs was always enjoyable, so I want to bring that enjoyment that I had to any kid. Um, I've always looked at the Y as a second home, and I wish to make that a reality for as many as I can. Thanks again. Thank you, Jake. Congratulations and um, Burnham Family Branch, very proud of everything you've done. So thank you very much. And now for the third and final attempt, I'm gonna turn this back to Robbie Lawrence to, um, to recognize our North Attleboro Branch. So thank you, Robbie. All right, here we go. <laughs> um, good evening, my name is Robbie Lawrence and I'm here to present the 2019 North Attleboro Youth of the Year Award to Sandy Whitaker. Um, like so many of us, Sandy grew up a true Y kid, spending more time at the Y than at her house. Starting in gymnastics at a young age, Sandy quickly climbed the ranks of the gymnastics team. Eventually, this love for the sport turned into Sandy teaching gymnastics lessons at her branch and being the captain of the gymnastics team at Mansfield High School. However, the place that I know Sandy from the best is Camp Elmwood. Sandy has grown from a counselor in training to cadet and is now one of the most well-known counselors on our staff. Her humor, creativity, and trustworthiness makes her one of the most well-liked and respected people at camp. Sandy has an ability to connect with all counselors and campers that she works with. After a conversation with one of her campers she had formed a bond with, Sandy realized that this camper had received a Rofi scholarship to attend camp that summer. This struck a match with Sandy. During her junior year of high school, Sandy knew that she had to give back to a place that had done so much for her and her campers. Sandy began Sandy Scrunchies completely on her own. Sandy Scrunchies was Sandy taking old t-shirts and crafting them into hair scrunchies that she sold at our branch. All of the proceeds Sandy donated to Rofi. This is only one example of how Sandy has gone above and beyond for the kids and families that our wise serves. For those reasons and many, many more, Sandy truly defines the words role model written on the back of our camp shirts. I am excited to see all that Sandy does in the future and how she continues to shine light on our wise name. I am honored and proud to present Sandy as the North Attleboro YMCA's Youth of the Year. Thank you, Sandy. Would you like to say a few words? Yeah, of course. Um, thanks, Robbie. Thanks so much. It means a lot. Um, so my journey at the Y started about 15 years ago. I was three years old taking mommy and me gymnastics classes. I don't really remember them, but I do see pictures a lot. Like my mom took lots of pictures. She was always making memories of it. Um, I have to say that's when it all started. A few years later, I was about six years old and my first and most vivid memory of the gymnastics program was when I, when I was asked to move up to Hot Shots, which is a beginner gymnastics class. At the time, being six years old, I remember getting quite upset because I thought that Hot Shots meant that I was gonna have to go to the doctor and get a shot. <laughs> Needless to say, Debbie Moore, who was inviting me to the class, calmed me down and explained that it was nothing other than a step up and what I had no idea would be the next 15 years of the Y. I ended up joining the class and loving it, of course, and for the next few years after that, I kept up with the youth classes and loved it every week. I remember a time when I was at summer camp one day. My couple friends and I had seen the older team girls climbing the rope. I immediately went over to the teacher and said, I want to climb the rope and ring the bell. As an eight-year-old, my teacher had no expectation of me making it to the top, of course, um, but sure enough, she let me try and I went up and I rang the bell. Months later, I was offered to join the pre-team gymnastics, which meant learning routines and bigger and better skills. Fortunately, I took the opportunity and ran with it. I competed in the pre-team meet the next spring and ended up winning first place all around in my age category. It became obvious to me and a lot of other people that my days at the Y were just beginning. Soon after, I was offered to join the competitive gymnastics team, and I have to say, these were some of the most important and memorable years of my life. 
In 2016, I went to Long Beach, California and competed in the National Gymnastics Championship. I won first place all around against some of the girls I'd never beat before. After that, the years just began to fly by faster than they, than they had ever before. My senior year brought perseverance and connections with people I never would have expected. The person I am today is basically all because of the why and it's hard to put my gratitude to the why into words. I do have to say this though, the YMCA is home to me and I could never imagine my life without the YMCA as a part of it. My biggest thank yous have to go out to Robbie Lawrence, Chrissy Carrier, Madison Crisco, and my sister Lacey Whitaker. Without you all, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Thank you. Sandy, amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing it and congratulations on all your success and your continued success. Thank you. All right. Uh, next, we're going to our Boxborough branch, and this is the Youth of the Year Award presented by Alyssa Booten. She's our teen director at the Invences Foxborough branch. So, Alyssa. Hi, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce tonight this year's Foxborough's Youth of the Year. Uh, she's been a part of the Y for many, many years, and I've had the pleasure of knowing her since her pre-teen years when she was one of my campers. Um, and I'm now lucky enough to call her a member of my camp staff. She spent many of her years volunteering through our team leaders program, helping to organize events, bring new members into the club and creating a sense of community and belonging among teens from different areas and different high schools, which trust me is no easy feat. Um, in camp, I have watched her grow from an eager camper to one of the most reliable camp staff who I know I can always go to for a game, to help with kids or to be there when I need her. And as a past Youth of the Year recipient myself, I am proud to honor this year's Foxborough Youth of the Year, amazing leaders alum and fantastic camp staff, Emily Saba. Congratulations, Emily. It's your turn to speak. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I just wanna say thank you and um, how awesome it is to be a part of the Y family. Um, even through the pandemic, we had Zoom meetings for leaders, so we still got to keep in touch together and having camp this summer was a great way to have a sense of normality to life. And I'm super excited to be part of the remote learning program back in Foxborough. I should be starting next week, so never have to say bye to the Y even when I'm in school. <laughs> That's terrific, and thank you for being um, continuing with the Y even as you're going off to school. So, congratulations, Emily. So, um, it sure seems like the Saba family is giving back. So, <laughs> I know uh, Dawn was honored in the proud mother of Emily. So, we're making that connection for everyone. Um, so, congratulations again, Dawn. All right. Next, we're going to move to. Um, uh, a, a heartfelt award here. This is um, something that <clears throat> during the middle of, of changing our operating model and, uh, and responding to COVID last March, our YMCA and the entire community lost a, a tremendous pillar of the community in Tony Calcio. Many of you are blessed to know Tony and got to experience his passion, enthusiasm for life, his impact on the Y and the community, and so many great things that, that he was um, known for. At this year's annual meeting, we're honored to introduce a new award in Tony's name. Tony was a leader at the Y and in the region and nationally of protecting children from sexual abuse. So this award is an opportunity to celebrate that legacy and it's important work that he was really championing on behalf of the Y, not just locally, but nationally. So I'm delighted that we have um, Tony's mother, Barbara, here, among other family members, to join us here tonight. And we're going to present the first Tony Calcia Child Protection Award. It's a long, it's a long time board member is uh, here to represent uh, that award. It's Representative Jay Barrows. So Jay, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Mary. And it's, it's, it's truly an honor to uh, have the opportunity to uh, present this award. Uh, Tony was a dear friend. Uh, a great mentor, and um, we miss him every single day. So, but uh, thanks for all the the Y has done to ensure that we we remember Tony, his passion for protecting kids, and his commitment to training adults in 
how to do that, it's a powerful legacy that he leaves for all of us. I remember when um, our why began this work more than a decade ago, one of our early partners was the town of Foxborough. And the town's commitment to passing a town bylaw requiring all town employees be trained in child sexual abuse education and prevention has raised the level of awareness of this important societal issue. They've been a model both locally and nationally, and we hope more cities and towns follow Foxborough's lead in prioritizing child protection. As we recognize the town of Foxborough this evening for its leadership and commitment to protecting young people. We all know that Tony is smiling. We also know that our collective community commitment to this important work will continue. It's my pleasure to introduce the chairman of the Foxborough Child Protection Committee, Bob Carrera, to accept this recognition on behalf of the town. Has Bob been able to be entered in as a panelist? Looks like he's muted. Bob, we just have to get you off of mute. How's that? Wonderful, thank you. All right. First of all, I'm receiving this award for a multitude of contributors in the name of Tony Calcia. Tony's hard work and determination came first on my radar when in 2010, he conducted the first Dinosaur de Light training for the town of Foxborough. Before then, I noticed his name sprinkled throughout the Sun Chronicle various activities, mainly in the North Ottawa area some 10 years ago. Soon after that, the Bill Sheehan saga broke when several grown men detailing their horrific experiences at the hands of a town employee for some years prior. Although met by some sympathetic members of the Board of Selectmen, after some time it was obvious that that was all that was gonna be offered as far as any ownership of the past actions of a town employee who, by the way, had operated with apparent immunity for some 20 years. With a combined list of upward 100 victims, this could not be swept under the rug. An ad hoc com group of citizens comprised of Mark Sullivan, Bill Dudley, Linda Walsh, Jim DeVellis, and I got together and decided the past could never be repeated again, never again. With Jim DeVellis' guidance, a bylaw was crafted that would be protective of politics and be solely focused to spread the awareness of the prevalence and dangers of child sexual abuse in our community. This was passed overwhelmingly by town meeting vote and subsequently was followed by a vote to submit an at-home rule petition to the legislature to fix and expand the mandatory reporter law. This bill has been repeatedly testified for by your committee before the Massachusetts legislature is now tied up by the COVID issues. Our committee was formed and has had an overwhelming success in training thousands of residents and workers in the Doctors to Light do Doctrine, thus spreading the awareness for which our mission was established. We have a tremendous job ahead of us in the continuing of the basic training, the retraining of our residents. Tony set the bar high, and we are constantly challenged to achieve that more to, to honor his legacy. I accept this award for all that are working in this memory and the continuing reaching forward. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, and congratulations to the town of Foxborough and this amazing work that you've done. So thank you for being so passionate and um, congratulations on the uh, recognition for Tony Calcio's award more deserving group, uh, you're, you're always held up as the example of how to do it. So thank you. Thank you. Next is the Don Rodman Character Counts Award. And um, we're gonna be this year um, renaming our Character Counts Award in honor of and memory of a very special friend of the Y, a true legend to the entire Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So Don Rodman um, was a treasured partner of our YMCA for many, many years. And um, we're very proud to have Marilyn Rodman Teen Center in our Foxborough branch. 
unfortunately, Don passed away this past year, but his legacy is going to remain and continue as we're very proud that we're able to participate in the Rodman ride every year. And kids are now celebrating the 30th anniversary of this ride this month. So if you'd like to participate, there's still time to join. But it's my pleasure to introduce a good friend of Dawn's and inspiring volunteer leader of our YMCA to, to do the honors here. I'll pass it to Greg Spear. Uh, thank you, Mary. Um, it truly was an honor to have an opportunity to present this first annual Don Rodman Character Count Award. Don's commitment to enhancing the lives at risk youth was unparalleled. And in recognition of his life's work, Don received the Character Counts Award from our Y in 2008. Don was a very special person who left a mark on anybody who was fortunate enough to get to know him. And I was fortunate to be one of those people. Don was a respected businessman, always believed in giving back to his community. When I was chairing the capital campaign to build a new Y in Foxborough, Don agreed to be on the steering committee. And let's just say there's no better connecting with uh, Don regarding his relationships and identifying individuals who had to learn uh, to learn more about the why. What Don did for nearly three decades through his ride is truly incredible. I can't think of anybody else who could get me and Ed Hurley to ride 25 miles on a Saturday, but every year Don would ask and the answer was always yes. Uh, this year, we're presenting the first Don Rodman Character Count Award to the Rodman Ride for Kids. Celebrating its 30th anniversary, this month, the Ride for Kids has raised more than $146 million for nonprofit organizations serving at-risk kids in Massachusetts. Don's powerful legacy will live through the Ride and through this award at our YMCA that will be presented every year at our annual meeting. It's my pleasure to introduce Amy Rossman, Executive Director for the Rodman Ride for Kids to accept this award on behalf of the Rodman Ride for Kids and the entire Rodman family. Amy. Thank you, Greg. You know, I can't think of a more fitting award to be named for Don Rodman than the Character Counts Award. I was looking at your annual report earlier, and um, they talked about values like caring, honesty, and respect, and Don embodied all of that in everything that he did. And he really believed in the incredible work that all of you do at the Hakamak Y. And I know especially he'd be proud and impressed with all you've been doing for kids and families these past six months and the way you've altered your perspective, as Katie put it. Um, all of us at the Ride for Kids are so honored to receive this first reward in Don's name and, you know, we're really grateful, most of all, to be able to carry forward his legacy so that the Ride for Kids can continue to partner with organizations like the Hakamak YMCA that do whatever it takes to make a difference for kids. Thank you. So thank you, Amy, and everyone at the Rodman Ride for Kids for all that you do and continue to do to support so many agencies throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So the Rodman family, our Y is so proud of the memory of Don and this annual award is going to be um, just one token of what he has done to improve the quality of life for kids at, at risk. So thank you very much. So our final award this evening is the Hockamock YMCA's Chair Award. I was honored this year to be able to select a recipient that recognizes an organization that has done so much to enrich the quality and life of local communities and really celebrate the impactful partnerships that we have with the YMCA. As a reflection of the theme this year in our 2019 meeting, where partnership really matters. Our partner this year that we're recognizing is, I'm proud to announce, the Bristol County Savings Bank. They've really had a life-changing impact on everyone we've served. Bristol County Savings Bank and their charitable foundation have really been there for the kids in so many ways over the last two decades. Just, uh, just the tip of what they've done, I'll go through that, but they've supported our capital initiatives to enhance our branch facilities. Their generous support of the integration initiative benefits 
young people with special needs, and that runs very deep. They've sponsored Adventures in Respect and our anti-bullying initiative for many years. They've also been a longtime sponsor of our YMCA Heritage Club annual dinner. It's for individuals who are provisioning um, their estate plans to, as part to the YMCA. They're also um, several members of their leadership team serve on our board of directors. And we've had the privilege of, um, of also having their partnership and service on the board of incorporators and special board committees. During the recent pandemic crisis, Bristol County Savings Bank was one of the first organizations to step up with a significant gift to our emergency assistant fund, and that supported the feeding initiative. Our partnership with the Bristol County Savings Bank is one that we really treasure, and together we've really worked to address so many important community and societal issues. So in recognition for all that you've done for our why and for the countless other organizations in southeastern Massachusetts, I'm proud and honored um, to present my 2019 Chair Award to Bristol County Savings Bank. I'm going to invite Michelle Roberts, the Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing Community Relations Officer, to accept the award. Thanks, Michelle. Mary, thank you so much. Um, Pat and I are so honored to be accepting this award on behalf of the bank. Uh, Ed and his team make it very easy uh, for us to support the, uh, the work that they're doing. When you look at what they do year after year after year and the impact that they uh, have had on individuals and families, but particularly when they need it most, um, is what's so impressive. So I feel like it really should be us <laughs> thanking you and thanking Ed and the team um, for their tireless critical work. And never really has it been more important or more evident than what they've been able to do this year, particularly in the areas of food instability, childcare, and education. Uh, I was on the incorporators meeting um, a couple of days ago, two days ago, and unbelievable uh, the amount of work and effort that's gone into uh, supporting families in the area. We are proud to call um, the Hockamock YMCA a trusted partner and add a good friend. We look forward to continuing our support for them uh, in their incredible work in our communities for many, many years to come. Um, I'd like to really congratulate all the other recipients this evening. We are honored um, to, be, to be the Chairman's Award this year. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you, Pat. It's been amazing um, to partner with Bristol County Savings Bank and um, Thank you for giving us Dennis Leahy and um, Paul Lenahan and their, their um, guidance on our finance committee has been immeasurable. So thank you for all that you do and continue to do. Appreciate thank you. It. You are so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So um, I'll conclude my comments tonight with just giving some thoughts and reflection on 2019 and then I'll pass it over to Ed Hurley who will uh, wrap us up. So I do, um, I do just want to thank each and every person. You know, I started off this, um, this meeting just really thanking all volunteers for their countless hours and their dedication to the YMCA. But I, I really would be remiss without thanking the YMCA staff and the leadership team. When, <clears throat> when COVID hit in March, um, the Y just did a 180. And you talk about being agile and adaptable in the business world um, to see this nonprofit organization um, just accelerate into the COVID challenges and enrich the community with their innovative health initiatives, addressing the food insecurity, being there for childcare, getting the camp going in a, in a phenomenal way, really making sure that every child in our community has a safe and nurturing place to belong. That was just incredible. And and it was, um, it was done with such honor and grace and such, um, such a, a eye towards detail to make sure that no one was susceptible to COVID. And, and that's pretty, pretty tall order. 
So I firmly believe that the groundwork was made possible in 2019 for what's in, in many, many years of hard work by this organization to, to take advantage of all the resources and put them to use in this journey and battle against COVID. So whether it's the um, Bristol County Savings Bank or last year's award went to CVS who continues to be extremely supportive in the um, food insecurity and providing diapers and, and resources, whether it's a town administrator, law enforcement officials, our superintendents, our educators, our colleges, our doctors, our hospital administrators, our state representatives, our volunteer leaders, all the phil philanthropic organizations that are coming together to support the community needs. I really feel privileged to be part of this board and I wanna thank everybody. I'll leave you with a quote that I think um, really sums up where we are today. And it's from Helen Keller. And um, you probably heard this quote. It's, we are all in this together. Um, it doesn't, doesn't even do it justice, um, but it's, oh, I lost my quote. <laughs> um, got it. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. So when you, when you think about Helen Keller saying that, um, you know, it's just appropriate for what we've experienced and what we're celebrating tonight. So with that, before I lose my place again, Ed, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks, Mary. And um, I, I, I want to just thank everybody tonight for um, being with us for this virtual annual meeting. This was something new for us. Um, I think it went, uh, you know, as well as we could have hoped for. Um, and I appreciate everybody's participation. We had a great turnout and, um, you know, we look forward to being together next year. That's the bottom line. And hopefully, as Mary said earlier, we'll be back at Lake Pearl next year. But tonight, we got to celebrate 2019 and so many of our community partners. And I'd like to add my personal thanks and congratulations. Um, you know, Maddie, um, congratulations on receiving the Dean College Scholarship. You are enrolled this fall at a great institution of, of higher learning. Um, they've been great partners and friends for our YMCA. And I know how great an, an educational institution it is firsthand because my son, Matt, is a proud bulldog. And thank you, President Rooney and everyone at Dean for your continued partnership and support. Um, to our Red Triangle recipients, um, Dawn, Saba, we go back a long way. And um, I'm just so proud of the opportunity to honor you tonight and the great work that you're doing with the West Side Benevolent Circle. It inspires all of us. And Kevin McIntyre and the Milford Public Schools, um, thank you for your many partnerships with our YMCA. I mean, you're a visionary leader, Kevin, and the town of uh, Milford is very fortunate to have you leading their public schools during these challenging times. We're very honored to work with you and all of your colleagues. Betty Poirier, you know, you're simply the best. Uh, thanks for all you have done for our community, our YMCA, North Attleboro, and everyone in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And most of all, thanks for your friendship, Betty. Um, to our Youth of the Year recipients, you know, to Sandy, to Jake, to Emily, thanks for being part of our YMCA family and the kind words you offered tonight about our Y experience. If you are the future leaders of our community, our community and our world is going to be in great shape. So thank you very much. You know, Tony Calcia was a uh, very dear friend to me and obviously a very trusted colleague and we miss him. I miss him every single day. And it was an honor um, tonight to see the Tony Calcia Award presented for the first time and to have it presented to the town of Foxborough, which has been an amazing partner for us for well over a decade. So to Bob, to you, and to everyone in the town of Foxborough, thank you for working with us and thank you for the important work you're doing that, as Mary said, is becoming a model for protecting kids. And, um, you know, I moved to Don Rodman, another person, I, someone who I loved. He was a mentor. He was a role model. He was a friend to me. And I'm so thrilled that our Character Counts Award will be given each year in honor of Don. Um, and to have the Rodman Ride be the first recipient of the Don Rodman Character Count Award makes it even extra special. So thanks, Amy, and congratulations to you and, the entire, and thanks to the entire Rodman family for all that you do. Um, Bristol County Savings Bank, you epitomize a community bank and we are so grateful to have earned your support 
and to be partnering with you for so many years. Michelle, to you and Pat and everyone at Bristol County Savings Bank, thanks for your commitment to improving your communities every day and for the amazing impact of the Bristol County Savings Bank Charitable Foundation. You know, President Kennedy once said, one person can make a difference and everyone should try. We need more folks trying like the people that we recognize tonight because we recognize some amazing individuals and organizations who are making a difference. And as a result, our YMCA and the kids and families we serve are better for your efforts. I wanna close by um, briefly reflecting on the past six months. It has been a challenging time for all of us personally and professionally. None of us could have anticipated or been prepared for what happened in March, but I am so proud of how our entire YMCA responded to this pandemic. And this could not have happened without donors who believed in the work we were doing and supported us. And we've now raised you know, just under $1.2 million to support the, the work that we're doing. And we, we continue to be blessed with amazing volunteer leaders. You know, thank you, Mary, for your leadership, um, you know, over the past several years, but in particular over these past several months, you and all the board of directors, along with the board of managers and, and board of incorporators. And to my dedicated, um, my compassionate, my talented staff colleagues that I get to work with every day, I mean, thank you for the way you all have led these past six months. And I was thinking this morning, there's an old saying um, that a ship in a harbor are, is safe, but that's not where they're meant to be. And thinking about that over the past six months, you know, our why, we pretty quickly deployed every ship at our disposal. And when we were forced to close in March, you know, we immediately pivoted to emergency child care for first responders and essential personnel. And we were providing quality care for up to 80 kids a day. And then our, we expanded our food security initiatives that Kevin McIntyre touched on earlier. And since March, you know, we've now served close to 175,000 meals to kids and families in our service area and provided nearly 19,000 bags of food each Wednesday at our branches, valued at $50 each to families in need. So it may have been safe to keep our Y ships in the harbor, but that's not where our Y or our ships were meant to be. And that's why right now we're working with our school partners to provide you know, virtual learning in numerous districts to further help kids and families during this challenging period. So in closing, I hope you're all proud of the work we have done together in these unprecedented times. I hope you're proud to be part of our YMCA team and to be able to share our YMCA story. I'm very grateful for your support, for your counsel, your investment in the work we're doing, and to our staff and volunteer leadership for helping our YMCA you know, navigate in these uncharted waters. So this will adjourn our annual meeting. I'll turn it back to you, Mayor, if you've got any final comments, but I really hope everybody here enjoy the celebration tonight. It's great to have a chance to uh, have some good news to share and to celebrate some of the heroes in our community. And we got a chance to do that with a lot of folks tonight. I'm hoping a lot of you will be able to join us on September 30th for our virtual Reach Out for Youth and Families breakfast. Should have all received an invitation to that. We'll be uh, following up with many of you, but thanks again, everyone, and have a great night. Yeah. Thank you, Ed. I, I, I can't top that. It's been um, an amazing just celebration tonight. And uh, so I hope you all can celebrate at home safely and, uh, and just really relish the fact that we've done great work here. And, um, and we're going to continue to partner and, and continue to meet the needs of the community together. So thank you. Um, together, we can do so much. I appreciate it. So have a great night.